everyone, it's Marianne, and welcome to Happy Paper People. Today, I am altering ugly paper. Well, it's not that it's so ugly, it's just that I've had it a very long time, and I never seem to get around to using this orange. And this one got something on it, and when I tried to wipe it off, it took off um, a lot of the color with it, so you can actually see the white paper underneath that color. So rather than throw it away, we can alter it. And so I'm going to alter these into something that I will use instead of hanging on to this orange that I won't use any longer. So the first one requires a coat of gesso or primer, either one. So my primer is getting really low, so I'm going to use the primer, see if we can't uh, help it get used up. And then we'll set this one aside to dry while we look at number two. Okay, so I don't want a very thick coat because I do want it to dry fairly quickly because I want to be able to show you what to do with it afterwards. So we're gonna give it uh, just a quick coat, a thin coat. And these two techniques work with both cardstock and paper. Now, sometimes when you use paper, you can already maybe see how as the paper gets wet, it starts to uh, curl a little bit. And that's really no problem because when you're all done with it, often by the time you finish what you're doing on it, it lays flat or you can give it a quick press if you want to. Some people press it by putting it underneath um, a couple of heavy books Others press it with an iron. If you have one of those Cricut heat presses, that works really, really wonderful. I like that for a lot of different things. So I don't want this to be thick, yet I do want it to cover the orange. I don't want the orange showing through. So that's drying really fast. Yay. So I'm gonna give it just an, a, another really small coat here just because I am seeing quite a bit of orange through. And actually, I'm thinking about it and thinking, in this situation, that what I'm going to do on top of it, that orange probably wouldn't matter. But often, it does matter. And so I just like to make sure that the paper is coated, the color is gone. I just have a nice layer of white to start with. Okay. So now we have white. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside for a minute, but just remember that this is number one technique. Oop, and we'll set it aside, let it dry completely. Let's see if I can keep it flat. And every time I put my finger down to hold it, it pulls some paint up. So, okay. I'm gonna take this whole little tray here and we'll start fresh. Whoa, I've got as much on my fingers as I got on the paper. So baby wipes are awesome. We'll just get this off here really quickly. Let's close up the primer because we don't need that for the second one. We'll set that over here and we will set our brush over there and let's get any bits of primer off that are on here so they won't get on our second project. And then we'll come back to this one to complete it. Okay, now let's get the rest of the primer off of our fingers, just because I don't wanna be wiping primer on the next project. And if you use adhesive, a liquid adhesive, that liquid gets on here, it can make it uh, not dry again, make it wet again, and so that primer can transfer. So not really worried about my nails because they're not gonna be getting on the project, just my fingertips, which is what I tend to use the most, is my fingertips. Okay, that was easy. All right, so the second project, let's grab that other piece of paper. The second project involves covering this piece of paper with, um, typically I use book pages or music pages, and I like to tear them so I'll take a metal ruler like this and just uh, turn it over because there's some cork on the bottom and the cork doesn't go all the way to the edge. So if I do it this way, it's not, I'm not gonna get a clean tear because there's that gap in there. 
So I will put it like this and it's quick and easy. And I'll show you as I finish this one page, I'm basically tearing paragraphs because I want it to be covered with all book page, not um, empty space, empty lines. So those I love in other projects, but on this I would I want um, to have uh, text on everything. And I'll do the same with the music paper. They both work wonderfully, and sometimes I mix both of them. Let's get this last one here. And this is an old um, Anne of Green Gables, so it's nicely aged already on its own. They tear super easily. Okay, so now all I'm going to do is get some uh, glue, whatever adhesive you like. Um, I would use a wet glue for this. A, I'm going to use this uh, Stamperia Collage Gel because it is just about gone. And we'll see what we can do to, to help it be gone. So I've got some pages that are um, torn up here already. And these are some, there's some larger ones and I've got some that are a little bit smaller here as well. So I don't want them all going nice and neatly like they're a page in a book. I want them going all different directions because there's a variety of things that I would do with a page like this once it's uh, complete. And I don't always know what I'm going to do with it until it's complete. And I'll explain that. Okay, so I'm gonna start out with a nice big piece here in the corner and I'm going to go all the way up to the corner if it's not exactly straight and I have to go over the edge with something, not a big deal. I go ahead and do that because I can just trim that up a little bit um, when it's dry. So no worries on that. Okay, and a little bit of collage gel over the top. Okay, and then let's see, there aren't, yeah, there's a couple other quite large pieces here. So I'm gonna go over to this corner with another large piece. And uh, it's been really warm, so I'm noticing that the collage gel is um, drying really fast. So I'm turning this the other, the other direction so that it's not facing the same way as the first one. And I like to put a few big pieces down and then fill in the space with smaller pieces. love these spatula. I'm going to put this one just upside down. These little silicone spatulas, they are amazing. Awesome for spreading any kind of medium and even media um, because they're silicone. As stuff dries, you literally, I just wait for it to dry. I don't put it in water and wash it off. I literally just wait for it to dry and then I just peel peel off the layer of collage gel that's there. I'm going to turn that one around the opposite of the corner above it. Yeah, just peel off the layer of collage gel, toss it in the trash. They work great. Now, the pages don't always get cut exactly straight. Some of, sometimes it's, you know, your own fault not having the uh, ruler straight. Sometimes maybe it's printed crooked. You never know. Let's get some in the middle here in between those two. And let's see if I can find one wide enough to fill. There we go. So sometimes I will pull out several different types of book pages. Like these are all from Anne of Green, from Anne of Green Gables, so they're all the same. But sometimes I'll pull out a newer book so the pages are whiter. Sometimes, you know, an older book so they're even more brittle and uh, brown and mix and match them. I really like doing that because um, it gives you a lot of dimension and a lot of uh, texture when you're complete. And you want them to, to come either so close that you can't see anything between them or overlap each other. And overlapping just a little bit is good. Let's make sure we're not completely sticking to here. Okay. Um, 
Let's see, what have we got? Let's um, just fill in. We're still pretty wet over there. See, this is where the page starts to curl a bit and, or lift up because, you know, it's kind of very wet. Kind of very wet. And that's okay because by the time I'm done, it'll either lay flat or I'll press it between books or use a heat press or an iron or something um, on it. What I typically do, I have one of the 12 inch Cricut heat presses and I will take like a stack, a small stack and I'll get it hot, I'll set them on the, the mat, and then um, I will press a whole small stack at the same time. You don't have to do them one by one, um, definitely, and it, it will press all of them together, which is really cool. Saves a lot of time. The other thing is, if you're pressing something that you have glued like this, either put a piece of wax paper or a towel, a thin kitchen towel is perfect um, over it. Or what I do is uh, put a, a towel or something on the mat and then I turn my pages upside down because I don't want that heat to activate, um, reactivate any of the glue or adhesive or you know anything that I have used on it. I can see right there that either it pulled off with my brush or it didn't get all the way to the edge there. So I should have taken that a little bit over the edge and just trimmed it off. No big deal, because I'll probably end up inking the edge no matter how I use it. I'm looking for some smaller, but um, sometimes, like I had a torn page, and so then when I tore it, I, I uh, tore part of the text off too, so I wouldn't have the tear in the way, and then um, I end up with a little square which is fine, and sometimes, like right there, a little square would be great. Let's make sure that goes to the edge or over the edge. Make sure there's adhesive on the page it's going on top of. Okay, and it's gonna be a little bit wider to fill that one, yep. So letting them overlap just gives it more stability. It's gonna, that is really close. Let me see if I have one that's just a little wider. Yeah, there we go. Just a little too close. I wanna make sure that it was covering. I don't wanna see orange through it. And I didn't didn't need to put um, a layer of gesso or anything down because the paper is acting as the gesso, as the, the covering. So let's see here. I'm gonna put one right here. I, I like mixing the, the music and the book page. And um, usually when I sit down to do it, I'll do a bunch of them. And I'll do some music, some book page, and then uh, some that are um, mixed. Okay, so what am I going to do with this when it's done? That's probably what you're asking, huh? What am I going to do with it when it's done? Let's just make sure there's enough on top of there. Yeah, that's pretty gooey, but I do want to make sure it sticks well. That is not quite wide enough, but I'll bet this one is. Yep, it's plenty wide. Okay, I'm going to do a couple things. So, I, as I said, when I sit down to do this, I will do multiples of these at the same time. So then, when they're done... Um, I will take some of them, just let them dry, and cut them into tag bases. I really like having tag blanks ready to go, um, even partially done, so that I can grab them, just add what I want for that particular uh, project, and good to go. So I like having a bunch of those on hand. And these make amazing tag bases, tag blanks. So then you could do a couple other things if you wanted to, to make some more base, um, tag bases, but not have them completely embellished. That, of course, we don't do until it's time to decorate for the particular project, because we may not know how we want to decorate that. I didn't want that one going the same direction. 
So let's see if there was a shorter one. I don't think there is, so it's got to be wide enough to go over that. Nope. Nope. There we go. I guess we've used that great big giant one. Okay, so once it dries, I can cut this into uh, tag blanks. That's one option. I can also continue um, going on with it while it's wet and let this be a collage base. I can continue collaging on top of it. And maybe I want to add um, just a little bit of music page or maybe I want to add um, a little bit of some paper of some color or napkins or um, tissue paper or something with a particular color so that it will go with a project that I have um, coming up. Or I might want to, and this is where I don't always know what you're going to do with it until you're actually doing it because sometimes we start out collaging and if it becomes amazing or you really like it and would like to use it over and over again, it turns into a master board. So what is the difference between collage and master board? I did a whole workshop where we talked about um, the difference between collaging and master board. So you're uh, welcome to go um, find that on my uh, on, on Happy Paper People right here and watch that if you like. However, in a nutshell, the difference is a collage is exactly that, a bunch of things collaged on the paper or collaged on whatever you're collaging on, and you're going to cut it up and use it. So this, if I go ahead and cut this into tag bases, is a collage of book page, and I'm going to um, cut it up and make myself some tag blanks or tag bases um, from that. Okay, if I continue on with it, I'll give you an example here. Here's one that I did the book page, and then I decided to play with some napkin pieces that um, had the honeycomb of the bees and a napkin that had some of the flowers, um, butterflies, you know, different things like that. All of this is napkin on top of it. And when I finished, I really liked it. And I thought that is one that I would like to um, scan in and print over and over. So that becomes a master board. If you ever worked in an office, and remember, remember back in the day when you would keep a master, a master copy in the drawer, and uh, boss would say, get the master and go make 30 copies of this. But the master always stayed in the drawer. That's the easiest way to remember the difference because a master board, you keep the original, it stays like this, you scan it in and you reuse it over and over again or make copies. It doesn't have to be scanned, you could make copies, but you're reusing it over and over again. A uh, collage, you're going to take this actual piece that is collaged and cut it up and use it. So a master board you would not cut up and use uh, like that. So that is the difference right there. So we could take this and continue going with some things and turn it into a master board or into a collage. Maybe it's going to be particular color and it's for a project and, and it's great. It's some good tag bases, but um, not necessarily one I would want to keep as a collage doesn't, you know, so that's why I say I don't always know until I get done with it or well into it, what it's going to end up being. But absolutely, I'm always going to do a bunch of them so that I can take some of these and just cut them into tag sizes and they're great tag bases. Okay, so this is technique number two to change ugly paper and make it usable. Now you can see orange coming through here. If I'm not sure what I'm going to do with with this. I, as this dries, I can see orange, or maybe it's while it's really wet, I can see orange when it dries, I don't so much. So, but if I was concerned about that, I would just uh, keep going and add some pieces on top. I would just uh, add more, I mean, Collage is layers, collage is you know, just adding more layers. So that's what I would do, is just keep adding some more layers, especially where it looks like it's coming through. And I could even do them the same direction as the one underneath it. So I keep, if I happen to like the layout that I have of that. Okay, so that's definitely covering 
um, the orange and maybe I put another little one right here. That's the side I intended to use. It's got more text on it. Okay, so you can see those going away. There's a, a little bit right there. Let's just put a, I think there's enough adhesive there. Let's put a little one going that way. Make sure I've got it right side up. By right side up, I mean the, the side that I wanted to use is the side that has the most text. If it's got blank lines, then that wouldn't be this side I intended. See the same thing right here. So I will just cover it like that. I'll go all the way to the edge. Doesn't matter how many layers because that's what collage is, is layers. But if you don't want to know that there's multiple layers, just take it all the way to the edge so you don't see the one underneath it. Okay, I do see quite a bit of orange through here. So I'll put that one, I'm gonna put that one on that direction. Collage that down. And this is sealing it all in too because I'm putting collage medium over the top. Doesn't matter whether you're using Mod Podge or um, a collage gel or I have a jar of tacky glue that I've added water to that just uh, uh, thins it out and that works great as well. So any, any of, you know, anything, any wet glue that you like to use works just fine. Um, I was looking for another small one. I think I'm gonna put right over the top of this here. Oops, I meant to take that all the way to the edge. Didn't quite get there. It's okay, ink it up and we'll never know. And I see quite a bit right here. So let me make sure that the entire thing is wet. If I don't get enough um, medium on the, the piece that's underneath the piece that I'm adding, that's when I get bubbles. Okay, that one's not as big. So I'm gonna leave it from the edge and take it up here so that it meets there and I don't have a tiny little strip because it'd be easier to just trim off a little bit of the edge. See this bubble here? That means I didn't get medium underneath that. So I, I would rather have a little extra and have it be plenty wet so I don't end up with bubbles afterwards. There are ways, ways to deal with the bubbles, but um, if I don't have to, that's even better. Okay, so how about one right here in the middle, covering that big pink or orange spot. And I may not know until it's completely dry. I'll let it dry and then see, is it just that I was seeing the orange through it while it was wet? And once it's dry, it's really not visible. Um, that might very well be. I'm gonna add this right here and then call it good. Okay, so I've got uh, tag blanks that I can cut out of this. I can keep going and make a collage for a project, or I can, uh, if I really like it, I can keep going and turn it into a master board. Okay, so that is idea number two of what to do with ugly papers. I'm only doing two today, so I wanted to keep this short so you can get in, get a couple of ideas, get out, and go do them. All right, so I'm going to move this one over and bring back our project number one that should be dry by now. There it is. Okay, project number one is dry. And depending on exactly what I was doing with it and you know how important it was to me to make it really, really nice, I might actually press that again on the back side. Um, and I don't want any of this coming off on my mat, so I would definitely put a, um, a towel or rag or something on the mat underneath it. But I'm not uh, I'm so concerned right now. It'll, it'll work just fine. So I am going to use a stencil. It's a 12 by 12 stencil, but it'll work just fine. And I'm going to try my best to get it centered. Oh, I think we're pretty darn close there. Probably about as close as we're gonna get. Okay, and then, let's see. Forgot to grab tape. Let me see if I have some washi close by that is strong enough to hold. It might, it might. 
I'm going to go ahead and hold this down. If it's a small stencil, I don't even bother to tape it. But this is a pretty big one, and because I want you to be able to see the process, I will tape it down. I don't want it to um, move. Hoping maybe I get the sides down that I won't need to do the top and bottom, but that is entirely possible. All I want to make sure is I don't have any washi over any of the stencil. And let's make sure that the stencil is down flat, which will help pull the paper down flat. Of course, if the paper is bubbling a little or rolling a little, it's going to try to um, pull that up. All right, that'll work. I mean, I'm going to hold this down with my hand as I work, so so it's totally okay. All right, so there's a couple of different things. Um, a couple of my favorites are to take a stencil and then take a um, blending brush of some sort. It could be this kind. It could be this kind. doesn't really even matter. And some um, ink. It could be Distress Ink. It could be um, any other kind of ink that you want. Um, it could be a blended, a mix of a couple of different inks. And ink through the whole thing and so when you pick it up you've got um, a brand new design on the paper that you can use so of course you'd want to use a design and colors that you want to use maybe for a particular project but another uh, a lot of you have probably done that so I thought I would show you a different technique that maybe maybe you've done it already maybe you haven't but this one is instead of Making room for everything here. Let's get rid of that. Instead of um, stenciling, I am going to use paint. So I've chosen four different colors of paint and I'm going to start by putting some of this. This is um, Stamperia Saffron. It's a really, really pretty yellow. Okay, put that in there. And I am going to start in the center. No, I just did that backwards. I did not mean to put that down first. That's okay, I'll put them all down and then I can just go to which one I need. I just about did it backwards. That's okay. It probably still turn out looking cool. They always do, you know. Okay, so that's saffron. This is orange. We'll use some orange too. And then I have raspberry. I really like the raspberry. This is the Stamperia Allegro, which I do sell in my monthly sales and we'll be putting into my Etsy shop uh, shortly. Just got a stock of it so it's ready for me to get um, organized and into Etsy. Okay, so I am actually going to start with the red, the opposite end. Some of you knew that and were probably screaming at me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start in the center and I'm just going to, well, that one is broken. It's okay, it's just a stencil. I'm going to start, you know, obviously I got way too much, so that just means I'm gonna have to play with paint and do some more things with the paint while it's out here. I'm gonna start with red in the center it does help if you press the paper first because the paper lays a whole lot flatter. And the flatter it is, the better design you're going to get because you're not going to go underneath the um, underneath the stencil so much. So we might go under the stencil a little bit, and that's okay. So I've got the red there. I'm going to pick up the raspberry and um, continue out here. And I'm actually going to overlap the red and get the next layer out. Okay, this is just a pouncy brush. Anyone will work. Any pouncy pouncy. Okay, so I want the red to blend 
to the raspberry. I don't want it to be a straight line delineation. So that's why I took the raspberry right over the top of the red. And then I'm going to go to the orange. I'm going to do the same thing with the orange. I'm going to overlap the raspberry and take it out to the next layer out around. And you can pick any four colors that you like together. I love the colors of the sunset. They're some of my favorite to blend and use in this manner. This is um, doing the colors in this way is really, really awesome with um, uh, ink and your blending brush as well. I could use this same stencil and the same te technique and have pulled out you know, maybe the four colors of distress or whatever, whatever, you know, kind of paint or um, ink you want and done this same thing with a blending brush um, instead of paint. And I do that quite frequently with the, the, the ink. And I do the exact same thing. Start in the center with the darker and work my way out so that they're kind of blending together, overlapping each one as I go. Now, that's not the only way to do it. Um, we, did, we did a Monday jump start where I did, um, let's see, we talked about techniques, stencil techniques. It was probably 10 or 15 um, techniques to use with stencils. And this was one of, one of them. But you don't have to start at the center and go out. You can start, say, at the bottom and start with the red here and go up to the raspberry, up to the orange, and up to the yellow at the top. And it's just getting that ombre effect that looks really cool. So, it, you know, it doesn't have to start in the center and go out. You can start at the bottom and go up. Okay, so I'm making sure that I've got this yellow all the way out here to the edge. I don't want white spots where there's holes in the stencil and there should be paint. So let's make sure we've got all that. Then I can go back and take a quick look at the rest of it, see if there's any holes that need to be uh, filled. Okay, I see a little bit, a little bit here, kind of a mix between the orange and the yellow. Ooh, little fibers are coming out of my brush. That's not good. Okay, and there's some in the orange to the pink there. So let's get a little bit of pink in there. All right. I think we've got, hopefully, we've got all the holes without getting a ton underneath the stencil. That is entirely possible because the paper wasn't exactly flat, but, but it's okay. It's art. It is totally okay. All right, so now I want to pick it up, get these tapes off without, move this stuff here, without um, smearing the stencil across the page. If I go across the page, it's just going to smear um, paint. So I'm going to do my best to pick this up. Um, the hardest part is not picking it up. It's just getting the, the tape. So once I've got, okay, there's just one left there. So I'm going to pick it up that direction. There we go. Okay, then I just want to set this aside and let it dry. Um, unless you wanted to do something else to it as well, but I would probably set it aside and let it dry and then decide if I wanted to, um, let me just move this over here out of the way so I don't get paint on anything. Then I could decide uh, if I want to um, kind of fussy cut around here or if I want to uh, maybe take some um, ink and ink the edges. Um, this is amazing on a 12 by 12 uh, piece of paper when you do it. So, you know, I could have grabbed a 12 by 12. I thought 8 half by 11 would be a little bit faster in showing you the techniques, but you could grab a 12 by 12 
and it would actually go over the, the entire thing. So I will just take a little tweezer here and I will pick up some of these little fibers that came off and are sitting there. You know, not a huge deal. They'll come off when they when it dries, but sometimes when it dries, they dry into the paint and it's much harder to pull them up without pulling up a chunk of paint. So, all right. So that is that. That's uh, technique number one was a layer of gesso and let it dry and then either ink or uh, paint with a stencil. Technique number two was covering it with a book page or music page or any other kind of, um, you know, book makes a really great base. And then decorating it from there, turning it into either uh, tag blanks or a collage or a masterboard, whatever you decide when you finish it. So that's uh, a couple of tips today on what to do with ugly paper, or even if it's not so ugly, if it's been sitting around so long that you just never get around to using it. So hope that helps. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask in comments. But mostly, I'd love for you to meet, leave a comment and tell me if you have another way of altering paper that you love to do. Um, for ugly paper or paper you just never get around to using. And if you've tried one of these and you have other tips to add to it, please leave that in the comments as well. I love learning from you. Um, we can all learn and add some new things uh, to our repertoire. So have a great day. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.